Welcome back to Creating Coins, where we talk about money and mindset for entrepreneurs. Today we're talking about how to find a virtual assistant, but really we're gonna be talking about how and when to delegate. So if you're an entrepreneur or sometimes what we like to call a solopreneur, uh, that means that you are building your business from the ground up, you're starting really with just yourself. And when you get that first assistant, let me tell you, that's when you feel such a relief. But getting to the point where you can get an assistant and get them set up and going sometimes can be a little nerve wracking, okay? If you understand what I mean. As an entrepreneur, it's likely that you are really good at wearing multiple hats. I mean, we just, we have to be good at that. We have to be good at so many different things because that's what allows us to get our own business up off the ground and running without any other help, okay? But there's some point where you realize that the things that you need to do that generate revenue are not the things that you're doing. Checking emails does not generate revenue. Uh, responding back to uh, inquiries, sometimes even grocery shopping, right? At some point, uh, that's not a revenue generating activity and you really have to focus on those things that you need to do in order to continue growing your business. So this is what I did before I found, hired, and delegated to my first virtual assistant. The first thing that I did was I started using a system, a project management system called Asana. Um, now there's a couple different project management systems out there. I know some people like using Trello or Trello boards and you know, there's uh, another program called 17 hats. So there's a couple of different programs out there and you can just choose the one that you like and kind of go with it. I decided to use Asana because I'm familiar with using it and um, it was free. So it was the first thing that I went with. Okay, so what I did was I looked at everything that I was doing on a daily basis and I essentially assigned those things to myself. So what I would do is I would start the task as if I had no idea what I was doing. And then I would document myself doing it and say, okay, step one, I need to do this. Step two, then I do this. And I would put each individual piece in as a task, as if it was, you know, I was hiring someone who was 15 years old and was just working at McDonald's, right? I needed someone who only had to follow directions, okay? So when you do that, you start removing yourself from those tasks and you start seeing what those steps are and exactly what it is that you do in order to get a complete task that is to your liking. Once I did that, then I started looking for um, other places and things that I was doing that I really could just eliminate, okay? So there are some things that you're doing right now that they really serve no purpose towards your business goals and you just do them because you have the habit of doing them. Uh, for me, honestly, that was blogging. Um, I really don't like writing. The writing that I was doing uh, wasn't something that I was using to generate revenue and I really enjoyed video instead. So essentially I cut out blogging. Um, at first what I did was I hired some writers to kind of take on the, um, the writing and the things that I wanted to, to still get out there. But eventually I realized that the writing was not something that I wanted to do at all. And so I just eliminated it. So think about those things that you can eliminate and then you'll start figuring out what things you need to delegate. Okay. The other thing that I did was I started looking at what things I could automate. So there are so many uh, systems and ways that you can take the things that you do right now and put a process to them where you can automate them. The same money that you take to spend to hire um, an assistant, a virtual assistant, you might be able to take that same money and put it into a system that um, essentially does the same thing for you. So let's say that you're you know, constantly using Pinterest as a part of your e-commerce strategy in order to, to bring more uh, traffic to your website, okay? There are several websites that will automate Pinterest pinning for you, okay? That's just an example, but there are some things that you can do, okay? Then once you figure out what you can automate, okay, does that still need a, a human eye? Does it still need attention? If so, that's when you'll figure out that you can delegate that to your virtual assistant. These are some of the websites that I went to in order to find a virtual assistant for myself. I started looking overseas. Naturally, it's been very popular to hire an assistant from a country where uh, the minimum wage is lower than your 
than your home country. So um, I started looking in the Philippines. I have hired people from India. I have hired people from Jamaica. Um, I've really hired from all over. And what I found is that there's a lot that I can get done. And there are a lot of people that have really great English speaking skills and that can help me in some of the tasks that I needed done. But then there were some things that I realized I really needed a local assistant for. And so that's when I hired locally. Now the pricing is gonna be different, obviously, but that's just something that you have to consider. So when you're looking at potentially hiring a virtual assistant, the first thing to do is to figure out what are those things that you are doing on a daily basis. Some people might call this a standard operating procedure. I just wrote down the things that I was doing every day. I put those tasks inside of Asana and then I took those tasks and assigned them to myself. And then when I got an assistant, I would switch out and assign that assistant to each of those tasks instead. That way I was able to kind of keep an eye on it. I knew what those steps were and um, it made it really easy for me to delegate. One of the best things that I did was to create mini videos for my assistant. So as I was delegating and figuring out what those things were that I needed to do, I would record myself going through those steps. Then I would send the video to my assistant with the steps and the tasks that they needed to do. And then they had the video to watch and usually it went off without a hitch. Sometimes I would get the work back and I would need to go back over it with them and say, hey, this is not exactly right. This is how I would like for you to do it. Okay. And you have to understand that the assistant is not going to be perfect when they first start. There is an on ramping period. Okay. If you're a control freak and you really like to make sure that all of your stuff is done a specific way, then it might take a little bit longer for you to get them up to speed. But once you do, you're going to have the time to spend to do all those other things that are revenue generating, where you can focus on your business and doing exactly what you need to take your business to the next level. Thank you so much for joining me today for creating coins. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to share it with a friend, especially someone who is an entrepreneur, whether they're brand new or whether they're just figuring out how to get clients online. And if you'd like more of these videos, then here's what I need you to do. I need you to leave me a comment below. Comment below and let me know exactly what you'd like to see next, what questions that you have. And then I also want to hear about your experience hiring a virtual assistant or what is holding you back from hiring a virtual assistant. Um, I'd love to chat with you and that's how we can get the conversation started. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.